Hey guys, Stefan Fischer here from All of Road. I hope you guys are well. If you recall, in February, before my Fraser trip, I had uh, Steve and Sky from Bush Barrier coming over and installing their magnetic paint protection on my Land Cruiser, which I was then to test for two weeks on Fraser Island, which I think it's actually quite a good test for a paint protection because a lot of the inland tracks are very overgrown and you really do get a fair bit of pinstriping if you do the inland tracks. So now it's time to tell you about my experience with the Bush Barrier product and how I find it and whether I will continue using it and if in what capacity and on which vehicle. Bush Barrier is a small Australian company uh, owned by Steve and I think his wife Sky. And they also were kind enough um, to come out one day before I left and uh, installed the bush barriers for me so that I could test them on the Fraser trip. They are avid for wheel drivers and they thought about a product how to protect their paint on their vehicles after a Cape York trip and uh, being in the industry of printing and uh, signage and so on and they thought it may be a good idea to come up with a magnetic paint protection which is removable, which you can easily put on the car, you can easily take it off. The concept is not really new. Obviously you have um, advertising magnets for cars for quite some time, but I think it's a pretty cool idea to actually um, use that to protect the paint um, from scratching and pinstriping. Look, don't get me wrong, my cruiser has pinstripes all over and if you're really super concerned about pinstriping, I don't think you will ever do decent remote touring because some of the tracks we traveled in Tasmania or even in the desert um, can be pretty bad on the paint. So while I'm not super concerned about it, if I'm on one of these bad tracks and, and for kilometers at end you feel that paint being taken off by sticks, I think it would be actually nice if you could protect that paint a little bit better. And this is with my custom built Tourer where I really take, you know, pinstriping and so on into account. But if you, for example, a weekend warrior and uh, you, you bought a new Land Cruiser or a uh, Patrol or a 70 series and you go out once in a while and otherwise it's your day-to-day -day car, I completely understand that you wouldn't want to have that look, you know, completely plastered with pinstriping. So I think the concept and the idea is great. The installation is pretty straightforward. Um, obviously you should do that on a clean dry car so it needs to be washed before. The panels arrive rolled up so you need to unroll the panels. Then you ideally also clean each panel with a microfiber cloth. Watching Steve and Sky who've done that obviously uh, far more often they knew right away which panel belonged where so I reckon if you do that for the first time you probably have to uh, figure out which panel goes where because the whole kit for the cruiser really contains quite a few panels I haven't counted them you should also take into account if you install the panels on a cold evening or in winter the material is a bit stiff if it's cold but as soon as you heat it up so for example if you can install it during daytime in the sun it will make it much easier because it molds much easier to the vehicle one thing you've got to be aware of you will find if your car had pen damage i wasn't aware but obviously that works uh, with magnets so it only sticks where there's metal and as you can see here that must have been some previous damage and that is filler so it won't stick that is something to keep in mind but our Fraser trip was pretty epic and we had a lot of things happening there so if you haven't seen that Fraser series make sure you check it out I will link it up here so on our Fraser trip we had a wide variety of weather first of all obviously I had to get to Fraser that means I had to drive on the freeway 
and uh, up to speeds, obviously the legal speed limit up to 110 and there was no issue really with the panels coming loose or anything like that. However, we also had horrendous weather on the way there. That meant we had torrential rain and downfall for the most of the drive. So I wasn't sure whether that would affect the panels in any way. Um, yeah, it certainly didn't. Um, so everything was good. On Fraser itself then, we obviously had plenty of sand, we had high wind, we had rain, we had storms. So a great variety of weather conditions and plenty of pinstriping on the inland tracks. Yeah, it's quite nice actually to not have to worry that much about the panels. I mean, you know, pinstriping are part of four wheel driving. But if I can protect my paint a little bit more, because I've got tons of it, uh, certainly, yeah, it's good. Let me get into the pros of the Bush Barrier paint protection. It certainly does what it's designed to do. It does protect the paint from pinstriping. Well, you can see that here. Even has dented this here a little bit. So it certainly does its job. On that inland tracks of Fraser, uh, there was quite a bit of pinstriping going on. And when I looked at the panels afterwards, it was very clear that I would have added quite a few more pinstripes to my paint if I wouldn't have had the panels in place. If you need to make some adjustments or like in my case you have a panel which had been fixed and the magnets won't hold, you can get the scissor out and easily cut it to shape. As a matter of fact, when Steve and Sky installed it, they didn't know which snorkel I exactly had, so they customized it at the installation. The paint protection is removable, so you can take it off, put it back on. So that is definitely a good thing. My setup was done on very short notice, so we didn't go into any big designs. I just had my logo printed on it, but I have seen since some other cars which have the print protection on, and it's incredible uh, what kind of realistic prints you can put onto the paint protection. So as advertising for your company or so on, it's certainly uh, well worth it, I reckon. Another nice uh, benefit is that uh, Steve and Sky really provide outstanding customer service, great to talk to, small Australian business, Australian manufactured, so always something I'm very happy to uh, support if the product is good. So let me go over the cons because uh, there is very rarely a perfect product and there are certainly a few things you need to take into account and see whether that is suitable for you. Number one, you're going to be adding between 14 and 20 kilograms of weight. So when you receive all that panel, they are not light and uh, it will add weight to the vehicle. I mean, in the scheme of things, you know, it's probably not a big deal, but take that into account. If you're already uh, at GVM and you add another 20 kilogram, um, it may be a concern for you. You've got to make sure that your vehicle has no panel damage and no filled panels because it just simply won't stick there. So that is something you need to take into account and uh, be aware if you have a used vehicle, you may find out that you had panel damage somewhere which you weren't aware of as it was in my case. Dirt and dust ingress. So that definitely does happen. So I had the panels permanently on for two weeks. Yeah, so one thing you've got to be aware of, it does collect a little bit of sand here. Uh, if you, you know, on very sandy places like um, Fraser here, we had some pretty strong winds, water. So that's going to come off soon, I reckon. It hadn't done any damage, but uh, I mean, you think about it, you don't want to have sand uh, in between the paint protection and uh, your paint and then drive around, maybe have sticks uh, brushing against it. And I would think that long term that definitely can cause an issue. However, Bush Barrier also says that you really need to inspect that panels frequently and you may have to take them off, clean them. Uh, clean the vehicle and then put them back on. And that is one of the reasons why 
I won't use the bush barrier for my touring vehicle. The way how I tour with long trips, often in very dry, sandy areas where you don't have an abundance of water, it is just not practical for me to midway into the trip uh, stop somewhere, take all the panels off, give the car a wash, give all the panels a good clean and then put the panels back on. Um, so for me that is not really a good option for my uh, touring vehicle. However, I have the Jeep which is my play truck and the Jeep is a fairly new vehicle. It doesn't have any pinstriping and I will put actually panels on the Jeep because in the Jeep I do day trips or weekend trips or maybe maximum a week and I don't mind at home taking them off, clean the car, um, clean the panels, put them back on but that is something which you need to consider if you do remote touring or you do touring for longer periods of time. It may be still worth it for you even on a long trip to plan in um, some you know stops where you wash the car and wash the panels and so on. Yeah it's not a set and forget. I saw that some YouTubers uh, yeah just put it on and leave it on there indefinitely. I personally certainly wouldn't recommend that. I think you need to check it at least every week and again as I found just shy of two weeks most of the panels had sand ingress around the edges of the panels. Some of the guys I saw use a round PVC tube which they attached uh, on top of the roof of the car so that they can store the panels, roll them up if they're not in use and just can put them in there. I think yeah good idea I don't think for me either I would put them on before a trip and take them off afterwards but I can't see that I'm going to store them then put them on somewhere but that is just me. I completely understand other people probably have no problems with that. Keep in mind you don't want to bend that panels, you don't really want to crease them um, because that yeah, probably would destroy them. So it is important to either store them flat, that is what Bush Barrier recommends, to store them flat and have a little piece of foam or cloth in between them. Or if you can't do that, uh, panel a little bit of cloth and so on, layered, and then you roll them up and place them in, in a tube or in, they come in a cardboard box which you could also use. But obviously that uh, PVC tube would be very good for that. So what is my conclusion of the bush barrier? Who would I recommend it for? Very simple, the product definitely does what it's supposed to do and it will protect your paint. However, you've got to be aware that you will need to monitor it, check it and occasionally have to take the panels off, clean the vehicle, clean the panels and put them back on. If uh, that is something you are willing to do, then I reckon it's a great product and will definitely work for you. Personally, I will not uh, put it on on touring trips but I definitely will use it on the Jeep for my uh, weekend and play trips um, because yeah the panels are new there, there are hardly any scratches on it and I certainly don't want to have the Jeep look like the Cruiser if I can avoid it. Thanks a lot for watching guys, I hope you enjoy my channel, enjoy my reviews, my trip videos. If you can, please share, like, subscribe. And if you want to support me in my endeavors, please head over to Patreon, become one of my Patreon supporters um, and you can shout me one or a few cups of coffee per month and help me out. You will get earlier access to all my content and you also will get access to me directly if you have any questions which I can quickly answer.